Hey everyone, Cassie Draws here and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to paint a tiger nose or a generic big cat nose and here's everything you will need to follow along today. Alright, so we're going to start off with the Academy Acrylic Mixing White from Grumbacher. We also have Burnt Umber. We have Titanium White and excuse the tube, it is very well loved. And Grumbacher Red as well, and this is all from their Academy Acrylic series. Next, we have a size 2 Grumbacher Golden Edge Filbert brush. We have a Grumbacher Golden Edge Triple Zero Round, so that's one of the smallest brushes that I have. And then we have a zero in the round as well. And lastly, we have the Molotol Acrylic One for All Pump Marker. This is in a fine point. And all of the materials I'm using today are sponsored by Chart Pack, Grumbacker, and Molotol. So a big shout out to them as well. Their links are in the description below. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first, before I go ahead and start laying down our base layer, I have gone and outlined the nose and the surrounding area with black, and this gives me a nice outline and a roadmap of where I need to put these colors. So to get started, for my reference, I have used red, white, and black together to create this very sort of dusty rose color, and this is going to be my preliminary base layer. So I'm going to use my Filbert brush, the largest one that I have in this particular tutorial, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start filling in this entire nose area with this beautiful pink color. And please keep in mind with this color that I have used, for your reference, you may want to add a little bit more white if it's a little bit more on the paler side, or maybe it's a little bit more on the red and the brown side. So based on your reference, you're going to change this base color to suit you. This particular reference that I'm using is a white tiger, and so it is very sort of gray, white, pink, and a little bit of burnt sienna as well, the entire subject and the reference. So just keep that in mind when you're using your base color. All right, so once that initial layer has dried, we can go ahead now and start blocking in the area surrounding the nose. So I'm still using my large filbert and I'm just going in with a bunch of different gray tones and I'm slowly starting to block in the fur that will be around the nose and potentially actually come over the nose as well, any sort of overhanging or stray hair. So at this point, it is not super detailed. We're just wanting to go ahead and block in those values and it kind of gives you a little bit of a roadmap so when you are starting to texture in detail, you know where those lights and those darker areas are. So I'm just taking this really nice gray and I'm just going to go ahead and fill all that information in. Depending on your reference, it will vary. So if you're working on a lion or a leopard, it's definitely going to be more on the brown and yellow side, whereas with mine is going to be a very, very cool gray. So hopefully this process helps regardless of the reference and just continue to block those values in. And then we're slowly going to start working on the details of the nose. All right, so now begins the fun part of our texturing and detailing of the nose with the shadows. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with my zero round, and I've just gone ahead and made a darker color than my original base layer. So I have used red, white, and black as my original color, and I've added in a little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of black to darken that into my shadow color. So depending on the color of your nose, you can adjust that and make that shadow what works for you. But I'm just going in and I'm starting to add in these sort of shadowed areas, the cracks or the crevices in the nose, and the sunspots as well. So my reference was very heavily, I'll call them freckles, they were very heavily freckled. This tiger looks like it could be older, and so I'm just going in and I'm starting to add all of those in. And right away, even just at this point, you can really see the difference that this shadow makes and really starts to make that nose pop. So add this shadow to taste. This color is a little bit lighter, I'm going to actually take this even darker Darker, but I always like to go in stages and in layers. So this is base layer number one. Look at your reference, see where those shadows are and slowly start to block those in.
All right, so once your first preliminary shadow area is completed, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and darken that another step. So I've added a little bit more burnt umber and a little bit more Mars black, and I'm just going ahead and I'm really starting to punch in those really, really dark areas. So normally on big cats, no matter the breed or the style or type, they have that center line that goes three quarters up the nose. That is usually the darkest area on the nose towards the bottom as well. So this area I'm really going to use this color quite a lot and mine definitely has a lot of darker sort of sporadic freckles throughout so look at your reference and whatever the darkest areas are you're going to go ahead and use this color there you may have more you may have less than I depending on your reference but just go ahead and really start to punch in those deepest darkest shadows All right, so the next step for our painting is we can start fine tuning and detailing further with highlighting. So I'm going to go ahead and use my zero and my triple zero round, and I'm gonna kind of bounce back and forth between them, but I'm gonna start highlighting this nose area. So I first start with the nostril area. Sometimes light will actually bounce off of that area, or if it's wet, it will catch light. And so I'm using about a 70 to 80% gray, and I'm just going in there and I'm starting to fill in that information towards the bottom of the nostrils. Not every reference will have this depending on the lighting, but for mine, it was there. Um, and something that a lot of people tend to miss. We tend to just paint that as a sort of dark void and there's no information there, but towards the bottom, a lot of times there is. So just kind of add that in if it's present in your reference and I think it will make a big difference. And now we can go ahead and start adding in some other highlights as well. So I've now made a lighter gray and a lighter pink color from my original color and I'm just going in and I'm adding those highlights. So for my reference, the highlighting was very, very prominent on the top of the nose, the kind of curved area, as well as the canvas right side. So that right sort of nostril that we see that was very heavily highlighted for me. So use those lighter colors, look at your reference and see where the light is bouncing off of that nose and how light do you need to take it. Some of them, depending on the lighting, might be a little bit more flat and others might be really glossy and highlighted. All right, so for the remainder of today's tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and briefly block in the surrounding area with a little bit more texture and details. I'm gonna go ahead and in further explanation, talk about how I paint my fur, specifically white fur in a further tutorial, hopefully coming soon. But for the purpose of today's tutorial, I didn't wanna leave it just on a plain background. I wanted to show you guys what it looks like as it gets more texture and more detail. So I'm taking my zero and my triple zero brush and I'm just going in and I'm starting to block in those shadowed areas. Um, some areas I will press on the canvas and release for a fine fur line, if you will. And then other areas I will block in with um, a sort of shape of color rather than the fine individual hair. So I'm just going in and I'm starting to put in that information. And once those shadows are completed, like the rest of this video, it's kind of rinse and repeat. I'm gonna go ahead and add in some highlights over top. And this will really start to make the nose look as though it is coming off the page and it belongs to something. Before the nose was very detailed and the rest was very flat, it looks as though it was just kind of stuck on there like a sticker. But now we can see it really starting to take shape and come together. All right, so as we are finishing up here on this fur texture, that is it for today's tutorial. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful to your own art journey. Please let me know down below in the comments what your favorite part of today's video was or what a future video would be that you would like to see. I always love to hear your advice and your feedback. And as I'm very new to YouTube, it is incredibly helpful. So thank you for your support so far. Our YouTube family has been growing immensely and I am so thankful for each and every one of you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on this video and hit the little bell button to be notified on my future uploads. And I will see you again in the next video. Don't forget CassieDraws.com to see my full portfolio and my web store. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you in the next one. Mwah.